A couple days ago, I made a video about how Salon was kind of linking Jordan Peterson with Charlottesville. They had an expert, Michael Kimmel, give an interview where he talks about Jordan Peterson in a rather unflattering way, to which I would call, I would call it fake news, misrepresenting Jordan Peterson's views and making some pretty outrageous claims. It seems now that the man, Michael Kimmel, is actually being called out for being a harasser and a bigot and homophobic and transphobic. So I haven't read through the entirety of these stories. I want to kind of do this in the video and react to it in real time. But it would seem that the guy who is smearing Jordan Peterson as a misogynist is actually the real misogynist. So the first thing I want to do is, this is a, this is a story I talked about a few days ago from Salons from August 9th. And I want to grab the part where he talks about Jordan Peterson and his views specifically. So here we have this uh, sl question from Salon. They say, when you read work by Jordan Peterson and Ross Duthat, which tries to analyze the crisis in masculinity and in the process seems to enable some of the worst aspects of men's behavior, how do you make sense of it all? Why is their work so popular and apparently respected as being serious and worthy of debate? Because it is rigorous? He says, I would not lump Jordan Peterson and Ross Duthat together. They are not the same in terms of the origin of their claims. So uh, specifically, he's talking about Peterson. It's Jordan Peterson saying, your life is shallow, stand up straight, dig in, do something hard, do something meaningful with your life, will you? Get off your ass. Oh, by the way, it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you're sitting there watching the world go by. It's women's fault. That is an argument that people have always been making, right? He's claiming Jordan Peterson's making that. Pretty sure Jordan Peterson is not making that argument. I'm pretty sure Jordan Peterson is telling people to get your house in order, which is, uh, I believe it's like a metaphor for, you know, get your life in order before you go out and try and do other things, but have responsibility. He says, in this logic, he claims, okay, I don't want to quote this. I don't want to read this because someone will take it out of context. But he's quoting, uh, he's quoted as, as, as implying Jordan Peterson is saying women, if they would just put out, then men wouldn't have to rape them apparently. If women would just put out a little more, he adds, prostitution would end. It takes the types of malaise that Peterson observes among men and tries to offer solutions. I agree that young men are looking for meaning in their lives. They will find it, but not in the place that Jordan Peterson thinks. He basically says you men are lacking meaning and resilience, but it's not your fault. It's women's fault. And what is this system that these right-wing men's rights types and others are suggesting, but basically a kind of state-run brothel? He says we're talking about the handmaid's tale here. In many respects, Jordan Peterson is a philosophical, philosophical clown and intellectual court jester. He likes being provocative, but he's not conscienceless. Peterson is a serious guy who has serious ideas about male malaise, but his diagnosis of it is so mistaken that he can't possibly offer a solution to it. This is Salon. Salon's far left. This is not true. I mean, look, I don't want to say I'm an expert on Jordan Peterson. I actually don't watch a lot of his, lot of his content. But this is very obviously extreme. And from, from what I've seen of Jordan Peterson, this is a dramatic misrepresentation of what he says. So apparently, I want to make sure I got this game. This is okay. In an effort to answer these questions, I recently spoke with Michael Kimmel. He is a sociologist at Stony Brook University. I'm assuming this is the same person that is being accused now of being a bigot, homophobic, trans, being called out by the left, okay? So they did this interview with him where this guy, Michael Kimmel, says this stuff. And now we have this story. Inside higher ed, more than rumors, a prominent male feminist deferred a uh, sociology award last week over what he called rumors about his professional conduct, but now a former student of his is putting a name and details to the claims. Michael Kim Kimmel, a distinguished professor of sociology and gender studies at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. So yes, the same guy who is lying about, or I, I don't want to necessarily say he's lying, but who is misrepresenting Jordan Peterson with these claims is now being called out as, a, as essentially a, a harasser. But let me, let me make sure it's right. Maybe they're not saying he's a harasser. Yes. Okay. They are. Um, they say, uh, last week that, uh, he said last week that he's deferring his acceptance of a major sociology award for six months over what he called rumors about his prof professional conduct. And while Kimmel's term, uh, terminology was criticized as uh, dismissive of his accusers, the harassment allegations against him, against him circulating online and off were, more, were then anonymous. But on Thursday, one of Kimmel's former Stony Brook graduate students put their name behind a detailed account of what they call his explicit sexual talk, homophobia, transphobia, and general lack of respect for anyone but cisgender heterosexual men. In an essay published in Medium, Bethany M. Coston, now an assistant professor of women's gender, women's gender and sexuality studies at Virginia Commonwealth University, said now is the time to share their experiences. To Coston, 
now means three years removed from working with Kimmel and the fear of professional consequences that could come with speaking out against him. It means showing solidarity with accusers' distaste for his response thus far and sending a message to the American Sociological Association. The association was to give Kimmel a career award for promoting the study of women in sociology at its annual gathering this weekend in Philadelphia. But Kimmel said last week that he'd asked ASA to wait six months to look into any claims against him first. This is a male feminist for decades. This is somebody who recently gave an interview that was essentially misrepresenting the views of Jordan Peterson, now being called out by another gender studies, I believe, professor, assistant professor, for being a harasser. I know there's, a lot, there's you know, the recent reset the clock hashtag, and that's when, how long until the next male feminist or ally is called out as actually being a harasser? This is a recurring trend that keeps happening. Michael Kimmel is no random person. Apparently, this is a distinguished professor who is going to receive a career achievement award being called out now. So there's, there's a couple things to consider, and I will read through more of this. Either this guy really is a harasser, a bigot, a transphobe who only cares about cisgender men, or they are simply taking him down for some reason. I'm not going to make an assumption one way or the other. The only thing we really have to go off is someone has laid an accusation against him and people are innocent until proven guilty, but there's only one of two, I mean, there's only one of two circumstances here. This guy really is a bad person who's pretending, masquerading as a male feminist, but actually holds disdain for these people. Or he is a cisgender white male, so he's going to be the target of those who don't like cisgender white males. Like, no matter what the circumstance is, this is not, you, you can work alongside certain people, but they will turn on you. You know, we, we've talked about how the left eats the, each other. And here we have it. Maybe this person is, is, is deserving of being taken down in this matter, of being accused in this matter, because maybe it's true. But regardless, this is a male feminist, someone on the left being attacked by the left. And it's unsurprising, to say the least. So let's see. Uh, timing aside, Kostin says, what makes this case particularly toxic is that for my is that Michael has spent the better part of the last three decades becoming famous for telling other men how to be better, including contributing to field-specific knowledge on intimate partner violence and community-wide conversations on Me Too outside of and even in the workplace. Indeed, Kimmel's an internationally well-known expert on masculinity, and his website notes that he's been referred to as the world's most prominent male feminist. So he's claiming that. But look, Somebody trying to, if somebody wants to say they're the most prominent male feminist and now they're being attacked, they're being accused of being an actual harasser. This is, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, this is really, really bad for the idea of male feminists for the left. I, I have some feminist friends and I was talking to them and they uh, got to the conversation of me saying I am not a feminist, right? I understand that a lot of people define feminist as someone who believes in equality between the sexes. However, there's a few issues I take with that in particular. The idea of using a word specifically addressing a particular group, feminism, doesn't represent, in my opinion, that the, lang the language is going to convey a message of equality. They, when you approach someone as the other or the enemy, you're naturally going to be at odds with them. So I believe there should be equality across the board for the sexes. But I believe that if you approach someone who doesn't understand the problems we face in the world and you say you're an other, they're not going to want to listen to you. So it is counterproductive to claim to adhere to a certain group. You know, if someone claims to be a social justice warrior and wants to talk to someone who opposes identitarianism, approaching them as the other is going to be a problem. But I also said, I also brought up another point. If we're talking about women fighting for rights, why would men fight for their rights? It's one thing to say you're an ally of feminists, to say I, agree, I support their message and let them do their thing. But there's, there's something inherently ironic about a man being a feminist, meaning that a male asserting themselves and what they believe should be for women is kind of ironic, kind of. I'm not saying it entirely is, I know some people will disagree, but the idea is this guy, Michael Kimmel, is famous for his work in feminism. If feminism is about women being empowered and finding equality with men, why would a man be above any of these women in terms of telling people how they should act and what they should or shouldn't do? He's not a woman. How is he going to know what women need? I understand he can be an ally, right? And that's why I just generally disagree with the concept of a male feminist. 
So I, I know they they exist, and by all means they can be if they want. But personally, I think it's it's ironic to have a man telling other people how to behave. And also consider this: there are women who don't consider themselves feminists. So now we're we're entering another kind of problematic territory of a high-profile, famous male feminist, a man, a male, who is going to then confront a conservative woman and tell her what she should or should not be doing, and that is anything but feminism. And so that's why I think the politics are just way too murky. You know, so they have an example, said in one example, Kostin said represents Kimmel's larger antipathy towards LGBTQ and non-binary people. Kimmel allegedly expressed disbelief that Kostin was dating a woman rather than a man saying he guessed the woman was more caring and nurturing, I'd bet. Costin alleges that this kind of stereotypical thinking about gender roles bled into Kimmel's sociology, and that he resisted new research suggesting that lesbians have more sex than was previously thought when a broader definition of sex was observed. Kimmel is also alleged to have resisted using students' preferred gender pronouns, of using a trans scholar's birth name at length. This is called dead naming. This is... A, this is, a, this is a, I can't believe this. And of showing general disregard for trans issues. Tugs are the new lugs he's alleged to have declared, meaning that trans until graduation and lesbian until graduation, respectively. This is a guy who's a male feminist trouncing on their ideology. Is this at all surprising? So I'll just read the, the closing uh, statement here. Stony Brook, meanwhile, said that it's unable to comment on personal matters, but that it has policies and procedures in place to fully investigate claims that are brought to our attention. Kimmel's department re referred questions back to the university. Costin did not immediately respond to an interview request. Are any of you surprised to hear that there is a high-profile male feminist who is absolutely disrespectful to the left and is now being accused by the left and being essentially taken down? This is, I don't know if this counts as a reset the clock because I don't think he's necessarily a sexual abuser, but apparently he has violated many of the rules that uh, the left holds dear. So... I think, you know, the thing that the f I found particularly interesting is this, this is a guy who was attacking Jordan Peterson, who was criticizing Jordan Peterson, misrepresenting his views. And it turns out this guy had all, he had less than good intentions, I would imagine. If somebody like this guy, Michael Kimmel, actually held these views where he was very critical of the left and then, and then, and then misrepresents Peterson, I have to wonder what his intentions truly were. I don't know, though. I'm not going to make assumptions. I just think the whole thing is rather murky. But I guess, you know... That's it for the story. Unsurprising to say the least. Stick around. I've got another video coming up in just a few minutes about, uh, about gender studies.